this energy is no bullshit because Saturn is so heavenly involved. Welcome back, Astro fam, to today's video. We are diving into the full moon in Virgo, and the energy around this lunation is so freaking serious. No bullshit. We have Saturn involved, and so we're going to take that approach in this video and just get right into it. As someone whose sun and Mercury is getting directly impacted by this full moon, I am feeling it, and I feel like the message I have to share with you today is going to be so insightful and so helpful. If you're new to me, hi, I'm Mandy Rose. I'm a relational astrologer, which essentially means when I'm doing astro forecasting or looking at your own birth chart, I'm taking the lens of relationships, helping you have the best relationship with yourself and the people around you because you understand what the cosmic weather is saying. And so with this full moon in Virgo, we have to understand the message that all the planets are giving us at this time, because this is a major alignment that is setting us up for the astrological new year. And once we get to March, the planets go wild, the energy gets chaotic, there are so many shifts and turns, and we're going to kind of feel like the universe is smacking us around a little, and not just in March, but also in April. So everything that we can do around Around this time, specifically around this full moon, is going to help set us up to get through that chaotic change that we're needing desperately in our life, but terrified to participate in and help us get through that a little bit smoother. So we're going to dive right in today. If you have your 2024 Astrology Alchemy Journal, go ahead and grab that out. You can open up to page 18. That is the page for the full moon in Virgo. You'll see here your journal prompts and the moon ritual, which I would highly encourage you to do. At the end of this video, I'm going to give everyone some ritual ideas that you can do. What we're going to do in this video today is first, we're going to go through the overview. What is going on in the current cosmic weather that's leading us up to this lunation on the 24th? Then I will do my fun facts, which is my favorite part about every full and new moon video, where I give you five interesting facts that's unique to this lunation in 2024. And then we're going to dive more into the specifics. So once we get to the specifics, if you have your birth chart handy, grab that because I'll be giving you degree points and things that you can look for within your own unique chart to see how it's directly impacting you. And then, like I said, at the end, not only will I give you rituals, but I'm going to also go through all 12 rising signs, letting you know what relationships in your life are going to be highlighted and illuminated at the time of this full moon that may need some releasing, shedding, shifting, changing, or letting go. So let's dive right in. Like I said, this energy is no bullshit because Saturn is so heavenly involved. Now we have to realize that last year when we had the full moon in Virgo, happens every single year around this time during Pisces season, Saturn was not yet in the zodiac energy of Pisces. And so this year at the full moon in Virgo where the sun is in Pisces, Saturn is here. Saturn is present. Saturn is saying, let's do what we need to do to clean up this area of our life. And so the first thing we really need to understand about this full moon is it's happening during the sun season of Pisces. So where is Pisces in your birth chart? Because this is the area of our life, understanding Pisces energy, where we tend to avoid, what we tend to escape from in our life, right? Pisces is just this optimistic, rose-colored glasses, everything is fine, I don't need to give it attention, and if it's uncomfortable, I'm just going to shy away from that. And so we all have Pisces in a certain area of our life where we exemplify that energy. And now Saturn has shown up last year in March and said, no more. For three years, I'm coming in as your tough love dad, helping you look at this area of your life and clean it up, organize it, structure it, create boundaries around it, right? Be committed and disciplined to creating strong foundations in this area of your life. And Saturn has been working and working and working this Pisces area of our life since March of last year. Now this year, the full moon rolls around in Virgo with the sun in Pisces and Saturn is present. And not only is he present, he is only four degrees away from the exact full moon. And we'll get more into the specifics with that. But that shows us that we need to really listen to Saturn at this time. Seriousness, committed, responsibility, discipline. And when we understand what Virgo energy requires of us, it requires us to do the work. It's an earth sign around what? Our physical health, our routines, our day-to-day -day life. When we look at the energy of Virgo and what Virgo you know, rules in our life, it is the physical body. It's what you do from the minute you wake up to the moment you go to bed and while you sleep that keeps you well. 
So it's your supplements, it's your diet, it's your movement, it's your work-life balance, it's your sleep structure, it's the thoughts that you think because Mercury is the ruler of Virgo and where Virgo rules the body, Mercury, Mercury rules the mind. And now we have this mind-body connection that we also have to take into account what we think, the thoughts that we have on a regular basis, the words that we speak. All of this is being played into, you know, this energy of what Saturn is saying. It's time to get responsible for the thoughts that you think. It's time to get disciplined in your supplements, in your routine. It's time to get committed to some habits and behaviors that are in your best interest. Because why? Saturn in Pisces is directly opposite the moon in Virgo that's illuminating and highlighting what we should be doing at this time. And the thing that we have to be reminded of, even though it's a full moon in Virgo, this Pisces energy where Saturn is, where the sun is, where Mercury is, where Neptune is, right? Four planets in Pisces at the time of this full moon. We're feeling that whether it's a day or night, whether the sun is illuminating on us or the moon at night is illuminating upon us. The moon is just a reflection of the energy in Pisces. So this is really the energy we have to be embracing and embodying. And the last thing that we kind of have to pay attention to as we're moving into this lunation on the 24th is the fact that the sun being in Pisces is the final season of the astrological year. So we are in this season of getting ready to get ready to be prepared for the astrological new year, which happens to be eclipse season this year which happens to be the time that Mercury kicks off his retrograde and puts us into retrograde energy for the rest of 2024. So what does Pisces season ask us to do? Rest, retreat, slow down, cleanse, purge, detox, purify, let go, shed, forgive, remove unwanted things. Pisces is a very spiritual energy. So we need to be looking at not only our physical body because the moon is in Virgo and highlighting our physical habits and our day-to-day -day routines, but the sun in Pisces is illuminating and radiating our spiritual side, our energetic side, our emotional side. So not only are we looking at our day-to-day -day and what keeps us well, but we're looking at the things behind the scenes, our subconscious mind, our thought patterns, our stored and stuck trauma and emotions in our body, our auras, our chakras your spiritual beliefs, your higher self, your connection to the divine. We have such an opportunity at this time to address all facets of our wellness. Such a beautiful energy for all of us to tap into. But remember, Pisces season is about slowing down, going into the water, being reflective, being in the flow, tapping into your intuition. And we're going to talk more about that when we get to the specifics because Mercury is in Pisces which is kind of like taking this processing software of our mind and throwing it in a pond and letting it short circuit and then just trusting our intuition. So let's get into the basics that you need to know. When is this full moon happening? Well, it's happening on February 24th at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so you wanna go ahead and adjust that for your time zone. Now it's happening at five degrees of Virgo. So make sure you check your chart, not only for five degrees of Virgo where the moon is, but also five degrees of Pisces where the sun is going to be. And remember, if you're going to do a moon ritual, you can do it up to three days before to three days after we're going to be feeling that lunation for that entire time. Now, before we dive into the fun facts, I have a couple exciting announcements for you. Number one, my 2024 astro forecast reading calendar is now open. I've been booked out since I got back from Africa at the beginning of the year. So I finally have some space in my calendar. If you're looking to dive into the year ahead, see what the cosmos have in store for you, know what areas of life you should be paying attention to, where to get prepared for the eclipse season that's coming, where in your life the lottery aspect is gonna be highlighting an opportunity or a pocket of you know luck for you and so much more. I'd be honored to do that for you. You can find my booking link in the description box below. The second thing is if you do have your 2024 Astrology Alchemy Journal, please add yourself to our Facebook group on the first page here under resources. I have the name of the group. Please go ahead and add yourself. Um, I do lives in there. Like this morning, I went live to talk about the astrology of this upcoming week. Um, we do moon rituals together. Um, I help you understand based on your unique birth chart, your rising sign forecast at the beginning of every month. And every single person in that group is an owner of this journal and gets an opportunity to win a free 30-minute reading with me every month. I draw someone's name who's been active in the group. So that's really exciting. If you haven't gotten your copy and you still want one, um, they're on sale right now for $20. Again, you can find that in the description box below. 
And the last thing to share is what is the tea that I'm drinking today? This was a very tough choice because the sun is in Pisces, but the full moon is in Virgo. And so I have both tea blends today with me. So during the entire sun season of Pisces, I will be drinking the Pisces tea. This is our spiritual tea blend. You want to drink this when you're meditating, praying, going on your hot girl walk, anything where you want to tap into your intuition and receive downloads. This is the tea for you. However, the Virgo tea is our gut health tea. So most Virgos have digestive issues. So we made this our gut health blend. So around the time of the full moon where I want to detox and shed and let go, I'm going to drink the Virgo blend. But today I'm actually drinking the Pisces blend to help open my intuition and channel any messages that you need to hear today. You can find the entire collection in the description box below. I have a contact form on that website. If you have any questions, which tea you should be drinking, um, how to use the teas, go ahead and fill out that contact form. I'll be happy to connect with you and find the right blend for you. So let me take a sip of my Pisces tea and let's dive into the fun facts. In my favorite part of my videos, the five fun facts time. And the ones for this full moon are so incredible. So the first one is actually not a fun fact that's unique to 2024, but it's something that we still have to pay attention to. And that is the fact that the full moon in Virgo is the final full moon of the entire astrological new year. And that is the same every single year. Because after the full moon in Virgo, the sun will move into Aries, kicking off the astrological new year. And so what does that mean is this is our final full moon to release, let go, shed, and get rid of anything that we do not want to take with us into the new year energy, where we start something new, we initiate projects, we take action, we're bold, we're brave, we're fearless, we're going into a new energetic cycle and chapter. But there's a lot of things that can't come with us. So every year at the full moon in Virgo, it's the final full moon of the astrological year. The second fun fact is very unique to the full moon in Virgo happening in 2024. And that is, this is the final full moon in Virgo that will not be an eclipse until 2027. This is huge. And I hope that this is one of the main things you take away from this video. After this year, after this full moon in Virgo, the one in 2025, the one in 2026 will both be eclipses. So you will not get another chance to release, let go, shed, cut away, change, release something in your life, wherever Virgo falls in your chart by your own free will under a lunation again until 2027. And so that's why it's even more important for us to take this seriously, Saturn's involvement, cut out the shit that we need to get rid of that is self-sabotaging us, that is hurting us, that is damaging our physical well-being, Virgo, a routine, a behavior, something that we know has to go, but we haven't been able to let it go. Because the next two times this full moon rolls around in 2025 and 2026, it will be an eclipse. And eclipses hold our free will and say, I'm going to remove it for you. I'm cutting it out for you. Or I'm going to have to teach you a major lesson because Saturn is the disciplinarian and Lord Karma. And we don't want that tough lesson to come around that forces us to cut that thing out of our life. I'm going to give you an example. If you didn't know this, I'm also a holistic health coach. I've been health coaching people for years is I will tell people they have to cut out, you know, a certain habit in their life and they refuse, they resist, they don't do it. And then, you know, six months later, they have a major health crash. And they're like, damn, I should have done that. I should have taken action. I should have moved my body more, right? But they had to learn the hard way. They had to be at the bottom to start fresh. And we just don't want that to happen with Virgo being such a physical sign, an earth sign, a practical sign. It's something you can actually do and take action on today because the eclipses are coming in Pisces and Virgo. By the time we get to September on the 17th, we are going to have our first official eclipse in Pisces and Virgo. So we want to make sure that by the time we get to the end of the year, this habit that we're letting go of is gone, is removed. We have six months to get it together, which leads me into the third fun fact, which is really cool, is the new moon in Virgo in six months, right? Right now we have the full moon in Virgo in six months at the new moon in Virgo on September 2nd, it's going to be an 11-11 moon because the sun and the moon will both be at 11 degrees of Virgo. And that's where we get to start new. That is the beginning. That is making a wish. That is setting an intention for our physical health, our well-being, our mindset, you know, all the things that we desire to create with Virgo's energy. 
But we got to let go of something first so we can get to there and make the wish and set the intention and move forward in this Virgo area of our life and around our physical and mental well-being. Takes me to the fourth fun fact of the full moon in Virgo that is unique to 2024 is that it's happening at five degrees. The first three full moons of 2024 are all at five degrees. We had the full moon in Leo last month, five degrees of Leo. Now we have the full moon in Virgo at five degrees of Virgo. And next month, which will be an eclipse, the full moon in Libra is also happening at five degrees of Libra. And five represents change in numerology. It's right in the middle. It's We have enough information. We have done some work. And now is our opportunity to shift and tweak and adjust and change something so that the outcome is different from where it's currently going. And so we have this opportunity at this time to really initiate change. We have the energy behind us in numerology and the cosmos and saying, hey, let's do something. If we want our life to change, if we want our health to change, if we want our reality to change, it's in full support at the time of the full moon in Virgo. And the fifth fun fact, which is extremely unique to the full moon in Virgo happening in 2024, and that is that we have the sun, Mercury, and Saturn coming into a triple conjunction just a few days after this lunation. And so this energy is becoming more and more potent. And so the sun that is highlighting this full moon at five degrees is going to be inching closer and closer and closer and running into Saturn at nine degrees. And so essentially whatever is being illuminated and highlighted that we have to let go and release and shed and cut out of in our life is going to then be within a few days answered to Saturn. Saturn's going to be like, Lord Karma, all right, you did it. You're working on it. Awesome. Keep going. Create that foundation. Create that discipline. Create that commitment. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I'm watching you because I'm going to be in Pisces for another year and a half. We got work still to do, but I want to see you doing the work. But if we're not, remember, he's our tough love dad, and we're going to have those karmic punishments, those lessons that can come to us towards the end of the year. So wherever Virgo falls in your chart, wherever Pisces falls in your chart, these are areas of life that need shifts. And we're going to talk more about that when we get to the rising sign. With that, I think it's best that we just pull up the chart and dive right into the specifics so we can see where this triple conjunction is happening and what the other planets are up to at the time of this lunation because they are all in full support. We have some other exciting things going on too that we have to make sure we're paying attention to because it's kind of like our saving grace around this serious no bullshit time. We can see our triple conjunction getting closer and closer by the minute, the sun at five degrees of Pisces, Mercury still only at two degrees, but he's hauling butt and he'll catch up quickly, and Saturn waiting for these two planets at nine degrees of Pisces. Now remember, we still have Neptune and Pisces over at 26 degrees at the tail end, where the sun and Mercury will run into him before the end of Pisces season. And so four planets in the energy of Pisces, all opposing the full moon in Virgo at five degrees of Virgo. So you want to check your chart again for Pisces. If you have something in Pisces, it may very well be activated since we have four planets there. And then also check Virgo to see if you have any planets there where the full moon will be illuminating and highlighting and asking you to shed and release something. So those are our major heavy hitters. Now I do want to pay attention for a little bit to Mercury because Mercury is the ruler of this lunation because the full moon is in Virgo and the planet whose home sign is Virgo is Mercury. So Mercury is the messenger, right? It's our mind. It's how we think. It's how we speak. It's how we express. It's how we share information. It's how we communicate. And in relational astrology, it's how we connect with others. Communication is one of the most important parts of having a relationship with another person. So wherever Mercury is in the sky is the energy or the influence we're under and how we're speaking, expressing, and communicating. And around a full moon in Virgo, where he's the ruler, that's going to be even more important, right? Now, Mercury in Pisces is not really a pleasurable sign for him, but for us, we can totally work with this energy. And why is that? Well, Mercury, like I said, is the landlord of Virgo, where the full moon is. But when he's in Pisces, he's the furthest away from home that he possibly can be. So we call this his fall. Think about yourself. When you're at home, you're in your comfort zone. You got your stuff around. You know where things are. Like, it's just easy breezy. Like, it's your home. You're comfortable. But imagine going on vacation really far from home to a country where the language and the cultures and all this stuff doesn't make sense. That's Mercury over in Pisces. Now, what does that look like in our day to day? Well, if Mercury's our mind and he's in the energy of water, 
that is slow moving. It's like throwing, like I said, your processing software system into a puddle of water and it short circuits. So our minds are going to start shutting down around this full moon, but that's okay because we're supposed to be doing the Mercury and Pisces thing, which is trusting our gut, going with our instincts, receiving the divine downloads from the cosmos, from your spirit guides, from your higher self. This is the time where maybe this monkey mind of Virgo, this analytical looking for details can turn off and we can go within. This is such a go within. You have the answers inside of you. You have the guidance already. You have a spirit team. You have your ancestors. I mean, you have so many ways to find the message that you need to hear other than going out and finding it in the world. So this isn't really a time I would suggest to read podcasts or ask for people's advice or go down a rabbit hole about your health. I would go within and say, what do I know? What is true for my body? What do I need to do that I know is right for me? This is like, you know, everyone has a diet plan that works for them. And so you can't you know, listen to a podcast and say, oh, keto, that's what works for them. That's going to work for me. No, you have to go with what works for you. So Mercury being in Pisces at this time is about you journaling. If you need to go see a healer and receive a divine message, if you just need to trust your own intuition, like it's time to go within and hear the message from God and source and not all this humanly noise and chatter. So remember on the full moon in Virgo, what's coming up and what has to be released, you have the answers, okay? Now the second thing is we have a Saturn in Pisces, right? And I mentioned this earlier, is that we're coming up on an entire year of Saturn in Pisces. The last time Saturn was in Pisces was 30 years ago in the mid nineties. So it's been a long time since we've had to look at this area of our life and become responsible create commitments, be disciplined. We don't like to do that. Pisces kind of avoids and put rose colored glasses on. And so it's been about a year that Saturn's been slowly hammering us and opening us up to this discipline and responsibility we're having to take. And now he's at nine degrees, a new area he hasn't come to yet in 30 years and saying, well, got to keep going. We're halfway there, right? He's almost to 15, which is the halfway point of his journey through Pisces. So we got to keep it moving, keep changing and creating discipline because Saturn is going to ask you to step it up more than ever coming up in the next few months. But we do have some exciting things going on. So let's kind of shift gears here. What else is going on in the sky that is supporting this full moon in Virgo and us ending and shedding and releasing and getting ready for the astrological new year happening in the sun season of Aries next month. And if we look at Aries, we see that we still have the North Node conjunct Chiron. This is healing. This is amazing. I'm sure if you've been following astrology content, you already know about this. But how does that support the full moon in Virgo? Well, Chiron is the wounded healer. He is the shaman of the zodiac. He is the one that brings up things that need addressing, that need healing, that need attention. And so around the full moon in Virgo, which is such a full moon about our physical body and our health and our overall well being, Chiron being the healer next to the north node which is the current north star that's like pay attention hello the time is now to do the healing to do the work so if things are coming up around your mental health your physical health your emotional well-being old traumas like things that you thought were addressed are coming up because saturn's saying no maybe it's not and you need more discipline and you need more commitment and you have to take more responsibility to address this wound and heal it once and for all because the time is now with the north node and I'm shutting down your logical mind so you go within and tap into your intuition and do the work that's being illuminated at the full moon to prepare us and release us from what is holding us back to get ready for the astrological new year and eclipse season. I think that about summed it all up. <laughs> so I guess I only have one more thing left to point out in the chart. And this is lovely and this is beautiful. And this is why I know around the time of this full moon that whatever's coming up and whatever thing we're just like, I'm breaking this habit. I am letting this go once and for all. Why it's going to be in full support and it's actually going to feel good this time around is because Venus is not only conjunct Mars, which is our feminine and masculine, the receiving and allowing and flowing and making it feel good, but Mars taking action and doing something about it so that we feel better, so that our life looks more beautiful, so that we have more pleasure, are in a square with Jupiter. And when you put Venus, a benefic, beautiful planet, in a square with Jupiter, which brings blessing, abundance, luck, expansion, and growth, it's saying, you got to change. You got to do something if you want the abundance, if you want the pleasure, if you want the beautifulness of life, if you want lucky breaks, we got to change something over here. We got to make things more beautiful and take Mars action on it. 
And so we have these benefic planets in full support to break something to make something more beautiful. Now, the last thing to keep in mind is Venus in this square with Jupiter. This is kind of like their last big conversation before they come conjunct, meaning Venus will run into Jupiter, which is like one of the most beautiful days of the year. And it's happening in May on the 23rd. And they are meeting up together at 29 degrees of Taurus, the final degrees of Taurus. It is after the lottery aspect has happened where Jupiter's run into Uranus and we have this big explosive opportunity, this luck, this expansion, this growth. And then Venus shows up and is like, oh, we're going to make it beautiful. We're going to make it pleasurable. So I'm really looking forward to whatever shift and change we make now to create more pleasure and beauty in our life, more harmony, to cut out the toxic, to cut out the habits, to cut out the self-sabotage, the victimization, the woe is me and do something about our body. Let it go. It's going to come to fruition. It's going to come with rewards and blessings like so quickly by the time we get to May. So I hope that inspires you. You know, maybe if you need to quit smoking, maybe if you need to quit scrolling in the morning, maybe you need to quit um, answering the phone call when your toxic friend calls, like whatever thing you know, you know what you got to get rid of. Do it. Do it. This full moon is in full support of that energy. And it's going to go so far as we move into the astrological new year. So get on that train, ride it, do the things, be disciplined. Saturn's asking you, he's Lord Karma. He's going to reward you. The time is now. So with that, let me give you some activities that you can do to work with this energy. And then we'll dive into the rising sign forecast. So the first thing I would do around the time of this full moon is a parasite cleanse or a detox of some sort. Now, the reason for that is parasites or pathogens within our body, this is coming from a health coach, they're more active around the time of full moons. That's why we get a little weird. That's why we can't sleep. That's why we're irritable. And so while they're out to play, when the full moon is active, we can go ahead and attack them. So if you've never done a parasite cleanse, I know the full moon is coming up here very quickly. I wouldn't jump into anything too serious, but there's very gentle, mild detoxes you can do, like getting in a sauna, doing a juice cleanse, maybe adding in some supplements that are supposed supportive of healing and detoxing your liver or your kidneys, um, you know, whatever you can find, do your research, please be careful, but it's a great time if you've already been in the detox game to add in some things to help detox at this time. The second thing I would do around the time of this full moon is a burn ritual. Um, because when you do burn rituals, essentially you're going to write on a piece of paper, the habit, the behavior, the trait, the whatever needs to go on a piece of paper, and you're going to burn it and release it and let it go energetically, and then you can physically let it go in your life. And the third thing I would do around the full moon in Virgo is clean out my pantry. Get rid of all the things that are sabotaging you, um, the cookies, the chocolate chips, the sodas, like whatever is not conducive to benefiting your overall well-being, it's got to go. So I do a full pantry clean out and start fresh and bring in all the goodness that's going to support you in your wellness journey as you move into the astrological new year. So before I dive into the rising signs, I'm just gonna wrap up this video. So after you listen to your rising sign, you can go ahead and get started on preparing for the full moon in Virgo. So I wanna thank you so much for joining me on this channel, for supporting me in my message of sharing astrology. If you wanna book a reading, I'd be honored to look into your chart for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. Let me know what area of life Virgo rules for you. And maybe why don't we start a little thread of what we're releasing and letting go? Because sometimes if we say it out loud, it kind of anchors us into that commitment because someone else knows about it and now we have to be held accountable for it. So I'll go first. I am going to release under the full moon in Virgo because it's activating my sun and my Mercury, my mind, is I'm going to be letting go of scrolling in the morning. I wake up, I grab my phone, I get lost in the rabbit hole, and an hour later, I still haven't gotten out of bed. And that is not conducive to my well-being or my energy levels, and so I am releasing under this full moon the toxic habit of scrolling in the morning, and I'm going to get up and do one of the other activities that actually truly brings me joy, whether it's yoga, movement, cooking a beautiful breakfast, going for a walk, messaging friends, and reaching out to people I love anything but going down the doomsday scroll. So let me know in the comment below, what are you going to release? Let's hold each other accountable. Make sure you hit subscribe as I'll be back for the March astro forecast, leading us into eclipse season, leading us and preparing us for retrograde season and all the shifts that are coming in the astrological new year. So until then, 
love and light. I will catch you in the next video. So jumping into the rising signs for the full moon in Virgo, looking at your area of life of not only Virgo, but where the sun is in Pisces and what relationships you need to be paying attention to and maybe what area of life you need to be releasing and letting go of some relationships or the way that they're currently unfolding. So starting out with Aries risings, this is going to put the full moon in Virgo in your sixth house. And so we are looking at your areas of life related to your physical well-being and your spiritual well-being. And so I want you to look at relationships that are toxic or sabotaging your overall well-being. Who are people that are encouraging drinking, staying up late, um, derailing you from your wellness goals, and maybe saying, where do I need to shift and adjust and call in new friends or new people that are in support of my overall well-being, right? So trainers, counselors, um, Maybe it's a friend that is on the same wellness journey as you. So I want you to really look at relationships that are maybe sabotaging your overall well-being because that is what's being highlighted at the time of this full moon and we need to get our health on track. Taurus Risings, this is gonna put the full moon in Virgo in your fifth house. So this is your area of life that has to do with your fun. What do you do for fun? Hobbies, games, entertainment, um, nurturing your inner child. This is also your dating life, you know, romance and who you like to, you know, have this playful um, energy with. These are creative projects and it also deals with your children. So it's going to illuminate the relationships that are in relation to those specific areas of your life and asking you which ones are sabotaging your well-being. Are you dating someone that is not supportive for your mental health, for your physical health? Maybe they are getting you out of your routine or your comfort zone. Maybe you have hobbies or, you know, things that you do in your day-to-day -day life that you aren't nurturing your overall well-being in order to do. So maybe you play pickleball and you need to start drinking more protein so that you can continue doing that hobby, right? Maybe it has to do with your children and what is being illuminated at this time around your children and maybe their health and their habits and their overall well-being and how can you be more in support of that and nurturing that? Um, looking at maybe some supplements they might need to have, you know, those kind of things that deals with your children's well-being. Gemini Risings, this puts the full moon in Virgo in your fourth house. So we are looking at the illumination of your area of life around home and family and how it relates to the sun being in Pisces in your career life. And so there's going to be a lot of energy right now that is kind of showing your overall well-being, your physical well-being and your mental well-being in correlation from your career life, your busy, you know, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis to your home and your family? And where does there need to be a shift or an adjustment? Where is maybe a routine or a habit at home impacting your career life? Maybe when you come home, you need quiet music, you need a clean environment, you need more of like a sanctuary. Maybe you need more structure at home where everyone has chores and everyone has to take responsibility and everyone has to do their part. And that allows you to spend more time in your career or maybe creates a better balance in your career and your home and family life. So I want you to look at relationships that are gonna help support and improve um, and, and cut out sabotaging behaviors around your home life. So maybe you need to sit down and talk to your family about that short chart. Cancer Risings, this is going to put the full moon in its illumination in your third house of your mental mind. Now, the sun in Pisces is in the ninth house, which is kind of like your higher conscious mind, your wisdom, your aha, your experience and your knowing. So this full moon is really going to be mental for you. And it's going to be asking you a lot about your beliefs, your thought patterns, the way that you're thinking, how you're speaking to yourself and others, and how you're allowing other people to speak to you. And it's going to illuminate maybe where there's some toxicity, maybe there's some negative habits or traits or um, you know, ways in which that you are using your voice internally or externally that are sabotaging the life that you want to create. So I would really look at your own internal mind and the voice and the tone that you have um, and the people around you, what they're saying. Be so conscious at this time of what you're allowing in your mind, the shows that you're watching, the music you're listening to, the environments you're in, the gossip people are sharing, like be very protective of your mind. It's going to be illuminated at this time of what needs to be released that is preventing your mind from thinking clearly. Leo Risings, this puts this full moon in Virgo in your second house. This is your money house. So this is your money moon of the year where it's gonna illuminate and highlight what needs to be cut out. So I want you to look at your budget. I want you to look at what you're spending your money on. I wanna look at how you're making money. How are people supporting you financially? This is such an illumination time for your money and how it's connected and tied to other people. The sun in Pisces is really bringing up debts or inheritances or things financially for you. And so you need to really streamline like what needs to be cut out of the budget. Maybe there are people in your life that aren't supportive of you 
um, cutting things out of your budget. Maybe you don't want to spend money on alcohol anymore. And so you don't go out as often and that's affecting your friendships, maybe in your marriage or your partnership, you want to change some of the ways that you're paying the bills or spending money for bills. Um, so any relationship that is around money or conversations around money might be highlighted at this time, but I want you to really look at your budget and do some cutting and removing and detoxing to prepare you for the astrological new year. Virgo risings, this is your full moon in the first house, looking all at the self. And with the sun in Pisces, we are in the season for you looking and focusing and highlighting on relationships. So this full moon is really kind of that push and pull between the me and the we. How much I want to give myself taking care of myself, nurturing myself, protecting myself. This is a time for you to kind of look at your own identity and your own physical body as a priority, but that may ruffle some feathers in relationships. That might mean people see you differently, react to you differently, think of you differently. If you cut your hair, people are going to see you differently, literally. But if you change the way in which you take care of your body and you prioritize yourself and self-care and self-nurturing, people are going to react to that different because maybe you're not giving to them as much. Virgo rising, you are very good at being of service in your relationships, of always forgiving, of always being supportive, having no boundaries in your relationships. You are like the Jesus lover in your relationships. But this is a full moon where you need to look at yourself and figure out where you are self-sabotaging in your physical well-being and in nurturing the you. Libra risings, that's going to put this full moon in Virgo in your 12th house, highlighting and illuminating your mental spaces, your subconscious beliefs, your connection to the divine, your spirituality, your auras, your chakras. And so this is the time for you to really clean house and to get into some habits and behaviors that are conducive to your overall mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. So going to sound baths, um, reaching out to healers, um, going back to church, doing prayer, doing meditation. I want you to get in some habits and some routines that's going to be supportive of these parts of you that are kind of more hidden or behind the scenes. Um, so really focusing on yourself and your overall well-being. So look for people in relationships that support that, that can assist you with that, that's gonna be vital at this time. Scorpio risings, this puts this full moon in Virgo in your 11th house. This is your house of community, of tribe, of friendship. And more importantly, your future, your goals, your wishes, your desires. It's the house of manifestation. So this full moon in Virgo is going to illuminate and highlight the people in your life, the friendships and the social circles that are no longer in alignment with you. And this really deals a lot with like your day-to-day -day habit. You tend to be around people that just flow in your daily life. So you might have a bunch of work friends when you work at this job, but then you work at that job and now your friends change because you're there more often. Or maybe you start a new you know, fitness regimen and you go to the gym every day. And because of that daily habit, you make friends at the gym. So Scorpio Rising, your friends relate to you based on your day-to-day -day schedule. And so what you want to do at this full moon, it's going to illuminate the people in your life that don't fit in your schedule, that don't support your overall well-being, and that cannot be of assistance and of service to you like you are to them. So there's going to be a lot of illuminating around friendships. And then what do you want in your future? What are we seeing? Where are we going? And what habits and discipline do we need to create and commit in our life that brings us joy with the sun in Pisces that's fun, that's sustainable for the long term? Now, Sagittarius Risings, this puts this full moon in Virgo, illuminating your 10th house. This is your career house. This is your full moon of looking brightly at your career sector and saying, what needs to be released and let go that I don't find enjoyable anymore? What habit is not sustainable? Where am I running myself ragged? Where am I doing the same thing over and over and over and over again? And it's not going to be the future I want to create. And so what habit has to go? Is it working late? Is it working on certain projects that never seem to go anywhere? Um, what are those day-to-day -day tasks that are so mundane that maybe you could outsource? So really the relationships around your career, your coworkers, your assistants, your boss, um, you know, maybe you have someone that you rely on, a mentor, a coach, um, who is helping you move forward and who can you outsource things to and how can you make your day-to-day -day life and your career better? But what has to be cut out in order to do that? It's going to be so important for you, Sagittarius Risings. Capricorn Risings, this puts this full moon in Virgo in your ninth house. So this is going to illuminate your area of life that's related to your belief systems, your philosophy, your experiences. And so where in your life are you kind of shedding the way and the view in which you've seen the world? Where do you need to maybe have some more experiences, learn about another culture, go visit another country, maybe read a book, get a mentor? Like where do you want to expand yourself in your mind? And where are you holding yourself back? Where are some 
limiting beliefs? What are some things that were instilled upon you from childhood that are not serving you in your day-to-day -day life? So this is a very mental full moon for you. And I want you to pay close attention to the people you surround yourself with at this time. And what are their beliefs and are their beliefs influencing your beliefs? And if so, are those the beliefs that you want to believe? And if not, then maybe you need to be strong in your mind and say, well, you can believe that, but I'm going to believe this. Or you need to do some research and education on other belief philosophies and mindsets. Or maybe you need to remove those relationships from your life because their beliefs are so toxic and influential that it's causing you to not stay true to your own beliefs. So I hope that makes sense, my Capricorn risings. This is a very mental full moon period for you. Aquarius risings, this puts the full moon in Virgo in your eighth house. So this is a full moon that is very financially relatable for you. Um, we are looking and illuminating at money that you have tied and connected to other people at this time. It's going to highlight and bring up maybe some debts, um, some loans, some money that people owe you or that you owe them. Maybe looking at your budget within your marriage or your partnerships, your business collaborations, um, and what needs to be cut out, what needs to be removed. What are you know things that are sabotaging this area of life and having conversations around that? Maybe it is paying off a debt. Maybe it's taking on a debt um, that you know is going to be beneficial for your health because it's investing in you know. A doctor or it's investing in something in your business that's going to allow you to take more time to take care of your physical well-being so this is a very financial full moon it's going to kind of illuminate money things so pay attention to relationships in your life that are either going to support you financially or that maybe you need to cut away and release that it's hurting your overall budget um, it's also a full moon that may illuminate some intimacy or sexual issues or challenges or things in your overall well-being that are blocking you from being more intimate with someone so this could be if you're having, you know, performance issues or you're having, you know, female issues, um, getting that addressed with a doctor so that you can be more intimate and sensual and sexual with your partners. So what needs to let go so you can have more pleasure and intimacy and financial harmony in your life. Pisces rising, this is going to put this full moon in Virgo in your seventh house of relationships. So this is your relationship full moon of the year. And as a relational astrologer, I am honored to kind of talk you through this one because this is going to illuminate romantic and deep connections you have with other people and figuring out which ones are toxic, uh, that are hurting you, that are not in alignment with your highest self. Because Pisces Risings, you have such an open heart. You are the Jesus energy in relationships. You give and give. You love the underdogs. You'll do anything for anyone. But what you need in relationships is consistency and someone who will give you that love back and someone that is willing to do the things every day to keep the love going. And so this is a full moon that is going to really illuminate and allow you to look at the relationships in your life and say, who does not support? me? Who does not give me the love back? Who does not show me empathy and forgiveness and compassion in the way that I give it to them? And so this is a full moon that might rock you, but I want you to trust that like we said in the specific breakdown, that all the planets are in support saying, trust your intuition, know what people aren't going to serve you and can't come with you that aren't going to bring healing, that isn't going to bring beauty and harmony and pleasure into your life. And if you release them and let them go in time for the astrological new year, in time for the eclipse season, in time for retrograde season, if you can just let it go, goodness will come. We will create more abundance. And remember, <laughs> we are going to be starting the next eclipse cycle in Virgo and Pisces as we get to the end of 2024 and kicking off 2025. So the eclipses that are coming up are going to rock and shake your relationship sector and your house of identity, your first and your seventh house. And this is going to be a heavy hitting time for you. So anything you can do to cut out people in your life that do not serve you and to make space and room for newness is going to be so absolutely beautiful for you at this time, my Pisces risings.